Well, good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are blessed with another day, with another moment, and another opportunity. You know, the Word of God talks about redeeming the time. You know, I want to spend my time that I have on this journey not seeking for the things of the world or the fame of the world or the wealth of the world, but I want to spend my time seeking the will of God. I want to spend my time sharing the Word of God, dwelling in the presence of God, knowing His love, knowing His power, knowing His truth. Because tonight, my friend, I'm going to tell you, there is no other place in this world in which we can find our answers. There is no other place in this world in which we can run and find strength. There's no other place in this world in which we can find the healing and the peace and the joy and all that we need tonight, my friends. But I am so thankful that along my journey that I met the one who can, that I met the one who is able. You know, my mother used to sing a song years ago, and, and inside that song, she talks about how that, you know, that she cannot take a blackened heart and make it white as snow, but she says, but I know a man who can. Tonight, my friends, I cannot, Pastor Perry cannot fix your answers. Pastor Perry cannot take your pain away. Pastor Perry cannot save you. I cannot deliver you. But my friends, tonight I know a man who can. I know one who is more than able, my friends, to reach into your lives and, and do whatever you need tonight. One who is able in this midst of the storms and the trials and the tribulations to walk upon the waters and come through the impossible and rescue you from all that is happening in your lives. But my friends, tonight in order for us to know this man, the word of God says, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Tonight, my friend, the only way that we know the voice of Jesus is when we know the truth of God's Word. God's Word, God's truth, my friends, tonight, is what this world needs. You say, well, preacher, people don't want the truth. People don't listen to the truth. But my friends, I'm going to tell you something. The truth of God's word is what you and I need tonight, what we all need, because it is the truth that sets us free. And so tonight, my friends, I want you to understand that tonight. I want you to understand that you and I as Christians, you and I as the church, we have a responsibility in this day and hour because, my friends, we have found the one who is able to do all things tonight. We have found the one who is able, my friends, to change nations. God said he would raise up whom he will, cast down whom he will. He is the one who delivers people. He is the one that maketh the way where there seemeth to be none. He is the one who is able to rescue your children and your grandchildren and your neighbors and your community. He is the one who can reach into your church and cause it to find the power and the strength that it needs to rise above every challenge and every storm and every situation. You and I, my friend, as the children of God, we know this man. We know the one who can. Brother Robbie, while the rest of the world cannot recognize him, while the rest of the world doesn't identify him and know him, aren't you glad tonight that Sister Crystal, that you and I are blessed tonight, that our eyes have been opened, the scales have been removed, the darkness has been broken, and the truth of Jesus Christ has been revealed in us tonight. Now I'm going to tell you something, my friends. If you have a right mind, Brother Philip, and you know who Jesus is, if you know that he is the one who can, then my friend, you are blessed tonight because there are so many out there in the world today that, number one, who do not know him. 
So many who do not recognize him. So many who do not have a relationship with him. So many that do not understand all that he's able to do for them tonight. Why? Because they've been blinded by the truth. They've been blinded to the truth tonight, my friend. And they don't understand the truth. When we talk about this man who can, they don't understand. The word of God says to them, the preaching of the cross is foolishness. Aren't you glad tonight that when we preach about the cross of Calvary, you and I know what the cross represents and what it done for us tonight. And my friends, it is our job, it is our calling, Brother Stewart, to be the light of Christ shining unto this lost and dying world. It is our duty tonight, church, to rise up and be the people who God called us to be in this time. Because, Brother Robbie, there's so much falseness. There's so many lies. There's so many deceptions that are out there today, my friend, that are deceiving our neighbors, that are deceiving our family, that are deceiving our children and our grandchildren. My friend, it is you and I, Sister Belinda, as the church of God, we need to represent the truth. We need to live the truth before man that they may see the way to God. Sister Brenda, it is a calling of the church to go into all the world and to share the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this day and hour that we live in, my friends, we need to make sure that we're sharing, that we're living, that we're following, and that we're giving the truth to the world. You know the word of God, Brother Rocky says, to raise up our children in the way that we would have them to go and then not depart from I want you to know tonight, my friends, so many people are raising their children in ways that does not reveal the truth of Jesus Christ. This world is deceived, my friend. They are following things that are not godly. They are following things that are not holy. You say, now preacher, you're just being judgmental. It's your thought. It's your mindset about this situation. Oh, Sister Tammy, you brought it to my mind last night. My friends, I want you to know something. This is not, Brother Al, just the opinion of Pastor Perry, but it is the truth in God's Word, and I'm going to show you you, if you'll turn with me to 2 Timothy at chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, the Word of God warns us that the truth is going to be blurred in the last days that we live in this world, my friends. It says here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, listen what it says, but know this, that in the last days, Perilous things or perilous times will come. Now, for many people, when we think about the last days, we know, number one, that we've been in the last days since Pentecost because the Word of God says in a prophecy that in the last days I'll pour out my Spirit upon all men. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and all these things. We know that Peter said that when the Holy Spirit came down in the upper room and they began to speak in other tongues and they began to minister to the people, Peter said, this is the fulfillment of that prophecy. As a matter of fact, Brother Rocky, there's another place where the Apostle Paul said that the spirit of Antichrist was present even in his day. But my friend, as we draw closer to the coming of the Lord, there's going to be many, the Word of God says in Thessalonians, that there'll be a great falling away. I want you to know that many have fallen away from the truth and begin to follow after the things of the world and the lies of sin and the deceptions of Satan. It is our job as the church tonight to make sure that we are holding the banner of truth 
that we are standing upon the word of God. You know, the word of God says that God is seeking those who worship him, not only in spirit, but in truth. Sister Tammy, he's looking for a people that are worshiping him in truth. But here he warns us. He says, listen, he said, perilous times will come. He said, for men will be lovers of themselves. Do you know that we live in a time when people put themselves above God? We live in a time when people promote themselves over God. I want you to know something tonight, church. It is not lift up the name of Pastor Perry. It is not lift up the name of your pastor or your favorite preacher. The Word of God says that if we lift up the name of Jesus, He will draw all men nigh unto Him. I want you to know something in that church. We need to fall in love with Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about the kind of love where we love Him for what He can do for us. For that we love Him for what He can give us, but my friends, that we truly fall in love with him and all that is a part of him tonight, my friend. We need to fall in love with that Jesus that came and died on the cross of Calvary. And here in a few days, we know that we're going to be celebrating the day of resurrection, the day in which we know that he was laid in a borrowed tomb. And on that third day, the word of God said that the stone was rolled away and Jesus rose again. That Jesus who loved you, my friend, who came and set an example for you that you may walk and understand the truth in which you should Go. Do you know, he says, I come not to do but only the will of the Father. My friends, tonight I want you to know something. Sister Tammy, when we fall in love with God, when we fall in love with Jesus, we are no longer looking to justify our will in our way, but we're looking to follow the way of the Father. We want to follow His way and be pleasing unto Him. My friends, but in the day that we live in, that men and women love themselves more than they do God, and they put themselves first he says lovers of money boasters well I'm going to tell you something today my friends we live in a time where the word of God says it's not money it's not a sin to have money but the word of God says that the love of money is the root of all evil. When it comes to the point that people love money so much that they're willing to cheat and steal and lie and do all manner of evil to obtain it, then my friend, that love has turned into sin. I want you to know something tonight, my friend. The Word of God says, What does a man gain if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? I'm going to tell you something tonight. You could be the richest individual on earth if you don't have the love of God in your heart. Honey, your money's not going to take you to heaven. Your popularity's not going to get you there. Your job, your title's not going to get you there. It's only the blood of Jesus that makes a way for you tonight. But let me tell you something. They love their money so much that they're willing to do whatever it takes, step on anyone's head, do anything to cheat, lie, and steal to get it. I want you to know something tonight. God is the supplier of my needs, and God will fulfill all that needs to be done. He said they are boasters. And I'm not trying to pick on anybody tonight, but I want you to listen when you listen to the men and women who is supposed to represent God, are they boasting about God and the things that God does and the things that God has done for them? Do they share? Hey, this is happening because of him. I give him praise. I give him honor. Or do they boast in themselves? 
I'm going to tell you, I could not preach without God. I could not teach without God. I would not have the understanding without God. But I'm so glad tonight that through Him, I can understand all things. Why? Because the Word of God tells me that that Holy Spirit that came back from God the Father and is now resting inside of man, the Word of God says that Holy Spirit will teach me all things and bring all things back to my remembrance that He has taught me. I want you to know something tonight, my friend, that I don't have to chase after the people of this world to understand and know because God will help me tonight to know the truth. See, here's the thing. That's why Jesus was able to say, my sheep will not follow another voice. Why? Because we know the truth. See, when I listen, I listen to the people of this world and what I'm listening for tonight, Brother Philip, is I'm listening to are they promoting self or are they promoting God? He said they are proud. Do you know the Word of God tells us that pride will get us in trouble, doesn't it? Huh? That pride and that haughty spirit. Uh, oh, let me tell you something tonight. That destruction and that fall, all of that that takes place in a person's life. I'm going to tell you something. I am not too proud to say that I need God tonight. I am not too proud to say that I don't have the strength on my own. Uh, because let me tell you, last night we talked about how that He is my strength. Uh, that He is my high tower. That He is my protection. That he is my way maker. He is the one tonight, my friend. We need to get pride out of the way. I'm not worried when I go down to that altar, honey. I'm not worried about what people saying about Pastor Perry. I'm not worried about what the world is thinking. I'm going to go down to that altar because I'm going to tell you something. I need him. How about you tonight? I need him every day and every hour. I think about what the one man says. He says, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. I want you to know something tonight, my friend. I can't walk without Jesus Christ. I can't talk without Jesus. I can't live without him tonight, my friend. He is my high tower. He is my strength. He is my all in all tonight, my friend. And I hope and pray that you understand that you need him Stop walking in that pridefulness. Stop walking in yourself. Stop boasting on self and give it all to Him. See, here tonight, my friend, God is more than able to make a way in our lives and strengthen us when nothing else can make a way. He is more than able to help us to rise above and overcome tonight, my friend. He is more than able to strengthen me and encourage me tonight. I don't know about you, but I want this man in my life every day because he is the way maker. He is the one who enables me and strengthens me. He is the one that leads me, directs me, and guides me. It is his voice that I listen for as I journey through this world, as I journey through this land. And as I journey through the valleys of the shadow of death, that's why I like the psalmist when he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me to death. My friend, it's not a boastfulness. <laughs> in my power, in my ability, in my in my things, but it's telling you tonight that I glorify him, for he is the one who is making the way. He says, they are blasphemers. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. Do you know that I, there was a time in my life that I could remember that people feared Reverence feared God. You know, the Word of God tells us that fear is the beginning of wisdom or the beginning of knowledge tonight, my friend, the fear of the Lord. I'm going to tell you that we're living in a time when people no longer fear God the way they used to, my friend. 
Do you know that there used to be a time when people were afraid to come on the church ground and to say or do anything that was ungodly, that was contrary to God? Because we remember that scripture about that man and woman. Do you remember the man and woman who sold a portion of land and they had decided to give it all unto the disciples so that the ministry could grow and that the ministry could use it? But they decided after they sold the land to keep back a portion and to lie to the Holy Spirit. Do you remember the man went in first and when he was asked, is this all of it? He lied and said that it was. The word of God said that he fell dead and then his wife came after him. Huh? And his wife came in and she said and done the same thing. She, They said, are you sure this is all that it is? And she said, this is it. And she fell over dead because she lied to the Holy Spirit. I remember when we was a young boy, that Sister Crystal, and if we walked across the church parking lot, us mean old boys that were rough and tough, man, we shut up every bit of nonsense. We didn't let any foul word. We didn't let nothing come out of us that was ungodly while we was walking across that church parking lot for that reverence fear of the power of God. Honey, I'm going to tell you, they'll come into the churches. And the word of God says that there'll come a time huh, when the abomination of desolation will stand where it ought not. I'm going to tell you something right now. There are people who are not afraid to crawl in the pulpits of God and live unholy and unpure. They're not afraid to crawl in the pulpits of God and pretend that they are children of God and the representation of God. I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. We be, better be very careful. We are standing on the edge edge of blasphemy when we represent the power of the Holy Spirit in a way that is not God. Today we live in a time Honey, when they don't care to get in the pulpits of God and, and proclaim they love Jesus and sing and play their instruments and preach and teach. Do you know I had a friend one time who told me, and boy, I even hate to say this out loud. I had a friend one time, Sister Tammy, who told me that he pastored the church for about three years before he ever got saved. Brother Rocky, I'm going to tell you, when you stand in the pulpits of God, you better make sure, honey, that your life is where it needs to be with God. See, that's the reason why that I'm not okay with sinners being in my pulpit, Sister Tammy. Uh, honey, if you ain't saved, it ain't get in my pulpit and sing and preach and teach. You need to have Jesus before you get in that pulpit. Because I'm going to tell you, I reverence the power of God. And I know that God is the one looking down on us and seeing all that we proclaim to be. Tonight, my friend, the Word of God warns us that there is wolves in sheep clothing. The Word of God warns us that there are people who proclaim to be the leaders of God who when the enemy comes, Brother Rocky, instead of them fighting for the sheep, they run the other way. Why? Because they don't have the power of God in their lives. I'm going to tell you something. No, Pastor Perry ain't saying he's perfect, but I'm going to tell you. I, I make sure, I, I pray and I and I meditate on God. I want to make sure that Sister Crystal, when I just walk into the building of God, I want to make sure that I'm where I need to be with Jesus before I begin to proclaim the power of His love and His truth to others. Boy, I'm going to tell you, Sister Brenda, they'd be some in trouble if it was the way it was when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies. Do you know that the high priest had to wear a girdle type thing and there was a rope attached to that girdle and Sister Crystal, if he went into the Holy of Holies, 
If you remember, only the high priest could go in there and everyone else would die that went in there because they were not permitted. If that priest went into the Holy of Holies and he was unclean, he would die. How would they know? Well, if you go back and you read the robe in which they wore into the Holy of Holies, you'll find out that there was bells and pomegranates on the bottom of that robe. And what they could do is the other Levitical priests could hear those bells and pomegranates making a sound as the priest was inside the Holy of Holies. That's how they knew he was still alive. But honey, if he came before God unclean, he would die in the presence of God. I remember the sons of Aaron, the word of God said, who offered strange fire upon the altars of God, that God consumed them and they died. I remember another man whom the word of God says that David wanted to bring the Ark of the Covenant down to where the people of Israel were, but he didn't do it the right way. And I remember there was a man who was with that cart when the cart began to rock and the Ark of the Covenant began to move. The Word of God said the man put his hand up against the Ark to stable it. And when he put his hand against the Ark of the Covenant, he died. I remember another place in the Word of God when Moses was up on the mountain. The word of God said, let no one come unto the mountain, for the power and the presence of God was there. If anyone came, they would die. I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. We have lost the reverent respect for God, for God's house and the things of God. My friend, we need to get back to being a people who reverence God tonight. He said they are blasphemers. They are disobedient to their parents. Woo! Do you know the Word of God tells us that if a child is disobedient, huh? He said if we are obedient to our parents, that we will prolong the days of our life. But do you know what happens when we're disobedient? We shorten our life. Why? Because let me tell you something. We come contrary to the Word of God Children today, I know that, Brother Philip, a lot of parents don't like for us to preach about bringing your children into subjection and correcting them and guiding them. I know that they say, well, let that child express itself. Do you know what the Word of God says? That in the heart of a child dwells foolishness. And if you let that child express itself without the guidance and the instructions that it needs, it's going to express the foolishness of a child. Let me tell you something tonight, children. We need to bring back the truth of God. We're afraid of it, aren't we? Well, preacher, if I preach that or talk about that in my church and with my family, they'll get mad at me. Honey, I got news for you. I'm sure there's a lot of people that gets mad at Pastor Perry for telling the truth, but that's all right tonight. I don't want to make them enemies, but I also don't want to be displeasing to God. He said, they are unthankful. Woo! Wow, what a day that we live in. Now, in the world that we live in, you and I would look at that as what have I done for these people or what have I done for my family or what have I done for my children and they don't appreciate it. I'm going to tell you something tonight, church. I'm going to take it a little bit deeper. They're unthankful in the fact that instead of giving God their time and coming to the house of God and worshiping Him and in giving time in witnessing and preaching and working for the house of God, in giving time to God in which he deserves, we put everything else before God, Brother Robbie. Then we say, oh, I appreciate everything that God has done for me. I want you to know, do you know we say this adage all the time, actions speak louder than words, don't we? Honey, if we, that's right, Sister Tammy, they have that form of godliness, I'm going to get down there. But let me tell you something. When we say that we are thankful, we appreciate God, but we fail to come to the house of God and worship Him. The Word of God says, well, I can just worship Him at home, preacher. Let me tell you something. 
The New Testament, not just the Old Testament. I can bring up Old Testament scripture too. But the New Testament tells us it is a command of God, church. If any pastor or preacher or Christian tells you that you don't have to go to church, I'm going to tell you something. They are directly deceiving you and causing you to miss the point of truth. The Word of God commands this is a commandment. If we fail to keep that commandment, and that makes us disobedient. The Word of God said disobedience is the wages of sin. I want you to know something tonight, church. If you are not following the command of God, you are sinning. So he says, fail not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. Now you say, well, preacher says, there's a couple of us get together every now and then and we talk about the Bible and we read the Bible. I'm going to tell you something. If God, I want you to hear me, if God did not want a church to be established, then number one, we would not have them. Number two, if God did not want us to establish churches and come together as a church, the Apostle Paul, one of the greatest disciples that we all talk about would not have went around in Asia Minor establishing churches and setting pastors in place. Why do we have in the word of God the outline for a pastor if we do not need a church? Woo. Say, well, preacher, I can worship God all by myself. Let me ask you this, Christian. Because I, I hear this a lot, especially by those who proclaim to go out on the street and evangelize on the street. And that's something we should be doing. But where do you send the converts, the people who give themselves to Jesus, where do you send them to to grow? Because how do the older men teach the younger and the older women teach the younger if there is no church for them to go? He also says to do it more as you see the day approaching, that day of judgment approaching. Why? Because the world, my friend, is going to get more evil. It's going to get harder. It's going to be overwhelming. And we need to come together. Why? Because all the spiritual gifts were given for a reason tonight, church. The spiritual gifts were given, huh? so that we might edify or lift up the entire body of Christ. If you have a gift and you're not using it in the house of God to lift up the congregation and the people of God, then my friend, you are not using the gift that God gave to you in the way that God intended. Wow. Do you remember... Over there in the Old Testament, I believe it might be in the book of Leviticus. That God says that if the people don't bring their sacrifice unto the door of the tabernacle, that they will be cut off. So, all preacher, now you're using Old Testament scripture. Honey, too many people are throwing away the Old Testament when they shouldn't be throwing things away. Let's go on. When we say that we're thankful, my friend, we show God we're thankful. We don't work to be saved because we're saved by faith. We work and we do the things of God because we show God our appreciation, number one. Number two, we want others to experience what we have found in God. Said they are unholy. You say, oh, preacher, that's talking about the sinners of the world. I got news for you. There are people who don't understand what to be what holiness really means. Holiness is a way of life. It's not just a form and a fashion. I believe Sister Tammy talked about it earlier. We're going to get into it about how they have the form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, uh, being holy uh, means something tonight. There is something about your life uh, that, do, that looks at the things of sin and the things of the world and does not desire to chase after them but instead desires to be more like God. He said they are slanderers without self-control. Wow. They are brutal. Despisers of good. 
Do you remember I preached on it this past Sunday? How that the how that the Pharisees got mad at Jesus when he was healing people in the temple who were blind and lame. Instead of them rejoicing, they got mad. Why is it that people in this day and hour want to call good evil and evil good? Said they are traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Honey, that right there is a big one. Why are we chasing after the things of the flesh over top of God? Lovers of pleasure. Now, honey, you can word that, think about that any way that you want to. But it said they love pleasures more than God. When it comes down to serving God and doing the things of God, preacher, I don't got time. I got all of these worldly things on my list that I want to do and, and I'm going to be a part of. If I get these done, then I'll come to the church and do the things at the church and be a part of the things at the church. Lovers of pleasure. You can ask my church. As a matter of fact, Sister Cynthia and I are getting ready to take a trip on Thursday morning. Do you know when we're leaving? We're going to leave after Bible study tomorrow night, drive up to D.C., stay in a hotel room, get on the plane on Thursday morning, fly to Albuquerque, New Mexico, where my wife is from. She's not been there in over seven years. We're going to be there Thursday, Friday, fly back on Saturday, and Pastor Perry will be back in the pulpit on Sunday morning. Why? Because I'm going to tell you something. There is a duty that I have to my church and to God, and I will be there in the house of God doing what God has called me to do and I will not put other things before it. Ask my family when I pastored there in Oceana, West Virginia they would have family reunions on Sunday. Honey, I got news for you. I would go to church Sunday morning. I would travel down. I would visit with family. And I would travel back. And I'd be back in the pulpit on Sunday evening. I would not miss. You say, well, preacher, now you're expecting an awful lot. Let me ask you something, my friend. When you think about all the time that you have to do all the things of the world, and you think about how much time you spend in church. Well, now, today, what they've done is, is they've cut the churches down to only one service a week. And, and so they really have taken all the time and given it to themselves. We used to have church on Wednesday night, church on Saturday night, church on Sunday morning, and church on Sunday night. I mean, I got news for you. The old churches that I grew up in, you may have started at 7. You might get out at 10, 11, or 12. Who knows what time you're going to get out. Today, it's almost like they're looking at their watch to make sure that you don't over preach because you're stepping on their time instead of being there hungered for God. I wish Sister Cynthia was in here. She would, she would back this up when I'm getting ready to tell you. Sister Belinda, we went to a church back home. We was invited to come sing for a church. And we went there and we sang. And the preacher got up and was preaching. And I noticed on the back wall there was a light. And it stuck straight out. I didn't know what that light was for. But as the preacher was preaching, when they got ready for him to shut up, they turned the light on because the preacher said, I see the light has been turned on. It's time for me to start winding down and, and close. I'm going to tell you something, church. If we do not have enough time for God, then why would we ever expect God to have time for us? He says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the, its power. And from such people, he says, do what? We're to turn away. He said, for this sort, 
are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. He said, now as Janus and Jambri resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. Let me tell you something today. Someone said it just a minute ago. I believe it was Brother Philip said that they hate the truth. I can tell you that I get attacked by people in this world who proclaim to be Christians because I'm preaching the truth just like I am tonight. And honey, they will attack me and say that I'm judging them and I'm judging others. I want you to know something, honey. If you're not guilty, then don't feel judged. You, you, what, what it is, is God is trying to convict you if you feel something about the truth that is being preached. Here he says, you remember when Moses went down and his brother and his sister came against him. The man of God, I want you to think about this, church. The man of God, the word of God says that the children of Israel prayed for years and years and years while they were in slavery in Egypt for God to send a man of God to send someone to deliver them. God sent them Moses to deliver them. And from the very beginning, instead of them rejoicing and saying, Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. From the very beginning, Brother Robbie, they attacked the man of God. I'm going to tell you, I've been a pastor for almost 30 years. And I can't tell you how many times that after churches prayed for God to send them a pastor, God sends the pastor, and when you get there, people start attacking him. Why do we pray for God to send us a preacher who will follow God and help us to grow and lead us towards God? If all we're going to do is when God sends the person to lead the vision that he has given them, it's all we do is attack them and come against them and want to get rid of them, then why is it that we even pray for them? See, we live in a time. Brother Philip, and I see it all the time. People on Facebook and, and people in the world and other platforms, YouTube and all these places, saying we want revival. We want God. We want a move of God. We want God to grow us. We want God to strengthen us. We want God to lead us until he does. Revival, you know what revival takes? Revival takes us repenting of our sins, tearing down the things that have led us away from God, and getting ourselves back where we belong. Huh? Revival. It's not a, now, sinners get saved during revival, don't get me wrong, but revival, if you go back and you read all throughout the children of Israel's life, revival came. When it came, it came because the people's hearts had begun to drift from God and begin to grow cold and God had to revive them and they had to tear down the idols. They had to tear down the pagan worship. They had to get rid of all the things that was contrary to God and truly repent of their sins, Sister Tina, and get back to God where they was to begin with. Let me tell you something tonight, church. When you say you want revival, then prepare yourself because the light of God is going to reveal into your lives, into your church, into your individual hearts the areas you need to change and grow. Well, preacher, that ain't the revival we want. We want the kind of revival where people just run around the church and praise the Lord and shout and amen and we just stand and glorify God. We want the kind of revival where God sends healings and blessings and opens up doors of promises. We want the kind of revival that makes us feel good and our church gets full. But we don't want the kind of revival that requires us to live holy. Oh, 
Man, I could preach a whole message on that. He said, but they will progress no further. For their folly will be a manifest to all, as theirs also was. But he says here, he says to the man of God, but you have carefully followed my doctrine. Manner of life, purpose, and faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, what happened to me. This is the writer speaking to them at Antioch and at Achaim, at Lystra, and what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Tonight, my friend, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin to close. I'm not going to get to the end of this. But I want to get down to verse 16. And I want you to listen. It says, all scripture. That doesn't mean the ones you cherry pick. That doesn't mean the ones that just agree with you. It says, all scripture. All 66 books from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation. All scripture is given by what? By the inspiration of God. God, you're, you're listening to a pastor who believes the entire word of God was inspired by God, that God is the author of this word, and that the men who wrote it down are just the penmen. This is not Timothy's opinion. The, the other writings is not Paul's opinion or Moses' opinion. They wrote as God moved and inspired them. They wrote the word of God into the 66 books. And honey, we cannot discontinue any scripture or any section of the word of truth and expect God to show up in a great and mighty way. He said all scripture is given by inspiration and it is profitable. Here's one that people don't like to hear. It's profitable for doctrine. Do you know, Sister Tammy, my whole preaching ministry work that I've done for the God, I've heard people say this. Well, we hope they'll come and preach, but I hope they don't come preaching any kind of doctrine. We don't preach doctrine here. Do you know what? Then they're not preaching the entirety of the Word of God if they do not preach doctrine. Right here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it said all scripture is profitable for doctrine. There is teachings, there is guidelines, there is outlines in which you and I are to live, my friends. And if your church is not teaching you the doctrines of the church, then how do you know what you're even standing on? He says... They are for reproof. Oh, I love my preacher man when he's telling me that I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. I love my preacher when he's telling me that God loves me and accepts me. I love my preacher when he's encouraging me, but I don't like him when he starts correcting me. Woo! Not only is it good for reproof, but it's also said it's good for correction. For the instruction is righteousness. Now, here's the reason why that all of this has to be done in completeness of the word of truth. Verse 17 says that the man or the woman of God may be complete. You cannot be complete in your, rep in your representation of God, if you are not getting the entirety of the Word of God preached to you with truth. He also said this needs to be done that they might be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We say this, that God will qualify the called and and he'll call the qualified and all these good things. We say that God will equip us and supply us. We say all these things. But we want all these things without the completeness of God's word. My friends tonight, if you want to be complete in God. 
<clears throat> if you want to be fully equipped for the battle that we're going to face coming ahead, then my friends, it's time that the church, it's time that preachers, it's time that pastors, it's time that teachers, it's time that Christians, it's time that individuals who proclaim to know Jesus, that we all stand up and walk in the full truth of God's word. Let us pray tonight. Father God, I pray, Father God, that your whole word will just come alive in our lives and that, Father God, that we will grow in your wisdom and knowledge and we'll mature in you, Father God, and that we will be able, Father God, to be the people that you've called us to be. That we will let you get a hold of us, Father God, through your word, that you will strengthen us and encourage us, that you will lead us and direct us and guide us. Father God, I just ask you tonight, Father God, that you pour out your spirit upon me and upon everyone listening tonight. Father God, let us not show let us not separate, let us not cast away, but let us live the whole truth, Father God, tonight, that we may be complete in you and that we also might be equipped for the good work that you have called us to do so that we can go out and battle against the enemy and see people delivered from sin, Father God. I pray tonight that your whole truth comes alive in our hearts, that we turn back to you with our whole hearts and accept it all. Father God, that you have for us tonight. Father God, I just pray tonight that you will speak your word, that it might be done. Speak it that it may be so. Father God, speak it according to your will. Let your power be felt, your power be known. Father God, in your presence be felt. Father God, in our lives. And Father God, let us know the truth and let us hear your word spoken to us that we might live, Father God. We ask it all according to your will. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. As always, I thank you for being with me tonight. I thank you for praying with me and praying for me. I, I hope and pray that you'll take and click the share button, share tonight's message, get your neighbors, get your family, get your friends to listen, get them to share as well. It's not about Pastor Perry. It's about the truth of God's word tonight, my friends. Don't forget, tomorrow night, we will not be on at 9 o'clock, but we'll be on at 7 o'clock at the church at Gordon Road Church of God for Bible study. Come out and be with us. If you can't come be with us in person, we will be online tomorrow night at 7. And then don't forget, Thursday and Friday night, we will not be online. Sister Cynthia and I will be traveling. Please pray for us that we get there and get back safely. I pray, my friends, wherever you go, that God goes with you. Whatever you need, I pray that God will bless you, protect you, and guide you. But most of all, I'm praying that God will use each and every one of you to read someone else for the gospel truth. Be blessed and have a wonderful night.